Hello everyone and welcome back to another card game tutorial video. In this video I will go over how to program easy special effects for cards for your card game. In the next videos I will go over intermediate and hard special effects. If you are interested in this series and want to see more, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to support this series and download these program files, be sure to check out my Patreon linked in the description below. Now for this video I'm going to do something a little differently. Since this is simple, I'm going to already have the code already written into the program and I'll just walk you through it and we'll test as we go along. The special effects examples I will use for this video will be the Pokemon powers for Charizard, Blastoise, and Machamp. In the next intermediate video I will go over Alakazams and Venusaurs. In the last, hard video, I will go over electrodes. The first thing we want to do is initiate our Pokemon Power variables. We will do this in a script called init power variables. We will initialize these variables to be zero. We want to do this, we want to initialize these to be zero because there can be multiple Pokemon on the field that have the same Pokemon power. And what we'll go over later in the video is if a Pokemon is paralyzed, asleep, or whatever that would cause their Pokemon power to deassert, if we used Boolean values, it would cause all of the Pokemon on the field's Pokemon powers that share the same card number to be zero or to be false and we don't want that so what we're going to eventually do is increment the value of this Pokemon power variable and decrement it as the game goes on so we want to continuously calculate the Pokemon powers because if the Pokemon cards are affected by paralysis sleep poison or confusion their Pokemon powers will be deasserted in order to do this, we will have to put it in our player object step event. So you will see the new code encased in these comment slashes. So what we're going to do is we're going to initialize the power variables in the step event to be zero. And then we're going to have this for loop that goes through each card on the field. Now, if the Pokemon is not paralyzed, confused, asleep, or poisoned, we're going to increment that Pokemon power variable by one. But if they are any of these, then we're going to decrement them. So now let's create these two scripts. So what we're going to pass this script is a card number. And with the player object, if the card number of the field card we are in is any of these values, we are going to increment this player object variable. So say if we had two Blastoises on the field. Blastoise allows the player to drop as many energy cards on the field as they would like. Now, if one is paralyzed, if this is incremented to two and it gets decremented by one because one of the Blastoises is paralyzed, this value will still be one, which will still allow the player to play as many water energies as they like. So that's why we're doing it this way. But So since we've asserted it this way, we also are going to deassert it the same way, except we are going to decrement them. So the first Pokemon power we will work on is Charizard's. Charizard allows the player to use all energy cards attached to Charizard as fire type energies. If Charizard's, or in this case Blastoise's Pokemon power is asserted, we will change all token values to the fire energy card number or in this case, water. We're using Blastoise values just for testing. 
but we need to add this poison, asleep, confuse, and paralysis condition because if there are multiple Charizards on the field, the Charizard power variable will be incremented to one. So we want this one to be specific to the card we're using. Other cards like Blastoise don't need that condition. As long as it's asserted, we could use it. But Charizard is not that way, since it only affects the one Pokemon card. So this needs to be in this condition for that reason. Now whenever we test this, we can change th these variables to be P Charizard and 4. So as you can see, with this for loop, we're going to change all the tokens that have been calculated in this for loop to be 98. Well, it should be 102, because 102 is water. And whenever we test this and it works, we'll change it to 98. But now that we have this much, let's test it. So the way we're going to test this is we're going to drop this double colorless onto Squirtle. And what that will do is that will add two colorless tokens to Squirtle. But now if the Charizard Pokemon power does work, whenever I put Blastoise onto, Char onto Squirtle, it should change these double colorless energies to water energies. And it does. So we know that works. So now we can change these to their appropriate values. So this will be P Charizard. This will be 4, and this will be 98. But one more thing I want to show you is, if I select Blastoise's Pokemon power, I want to be sure that whenever I select his Pokemon power, that it does not treat it like an attacking move. So in order to make this not do that, what we need to do is we need to go back to our script init arrays. And for each Pokemon that has a Pokemon power, we want to change its type cost and colorless cost to be 60, just to ensure that the player will never have enough energies on that card to make that happen. So we'll need to do that for Alakazam, Blastoise, Charizard, Machamp, Venusaur, and Electrode. The next Pokemon power we will work on is Blastoises. Blastoises is the easiest. His Pokemon power states that the player is able to drop as many water energies on the field during their turn without it taking up the player's one energy card per turn allowance. All that needs to be done is altering the code that asserts the energy set variable in the card object left released event. So we're going to do this in two places. If you remember, we had the condition here that said if the player energy set is true, return. What we're going to do now is we're going to change this from an if statement to an if else statement. And the if statement will be if the player's Blastoise Pokemon power variable is asserted and the energy card we are holding is a water energy, we want to skip over this condition. So if that's the case, it will not return us out of this event if the energy set variable is true. And another thing we want to do is, since this one will allow us to play another energy card, whenever another water energy card whenever we want, we want to make sure that that one water energy doesn't take up the one energy card per turn allowance. So down in this if statement, if the player's Blastoise variable is asserted 
and the card number is 102, we do not want to set this energy set variable to be true. If you remember, we only had this code here before, but now we're going to swap it out with another if else statement. So if we're playing a water energy and Blastoise's Pokemon power is asserted, we will not set this to be true. The last Pokemon power we will go over is Machamps. His Pokemon power states that if the opponent deals damage to Machamp with an attack, the attacking Pokemon will receive one damage counter. To do this, we'll need to go to our client handle message script within the send damage case. We're going to add the following code after the prevent damage condition. So we want to do this after this condition because Machamp's Pokemon power specifically says if the attack does damage to Machamp, then you can send one damage counter to the attacking Pokemon. So we want to make sure that damage is actually being dealt. And it also specifies that that damage has to come from a move. So move has to be greater than zero. The only time move is greater than zero is when you select a Pokemon's first or second attack. Everything else that sends damage to a specific card, move will equal zero. So if these two conditions are true, then we're going to go to the next if statement. And that states if the Machamp Pokemon power is asserted and the card number of the card that is being attacked is the card number for Machamp and Machamp is not poisoned, asleep, confused, or paralyzed, then we can send that one damage to the attacking Pokemon. And that's all we will need to add for this Pokemon power. So now let's test out Machamp's and Blastoise's. So to test Blastoise's Pokemon power, that states, I'm able to drop as many water energy cards on the field as I would like during my turn without taking up my one energy card per turn allowance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a water energy card onto Blastoise, then a double colorless, then another water energy, and then another double colorless. So I should be able to drop this water energy without it taking up my one energy card allowance. And then I should be able to drop this double colorless, which will take up my one energy card allowance. And then I should still be able to drop this water energy, which I am, but I shouldn't be able to drop this double colorless because it's not a water energy and I've already taken up my one energy card allowance. So as you can see, I'm unable to do that. So we know that that works, but now let's test my champs. So if I attack Machamp, or in this case Blastoise, I should receive one damage counter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack Blastoise, and as you can see, I received one damage counter. And then I should and then the same should be done if I attack my opponent, which I did. So that's all I wanted to go over in this video. In the next videos, I'll cover the other Pokemon powers. If you're interested in the series, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the series and download these program files, be sure to check out my Patreon linked in the description below. Until next time.